All right, so it's five o'clock, so we'll kick off and people can join as they see fit. Uh, so welcome to this evening's webinar. We're going to be doing a last of the summer wine, so the best Camino food and wine routes. Um, both of myself and Jeremy here, we're big fans of food and wine, so we hope you are too and that you enjoy this. So let's kick off. So the summary for this evening is we're just going to take you through a little bit of what we do and then we'll take you through um, a few food and wine routes that we particularly like. Uh, so Jeremy, if you would like to uh, tell us a bit about what we do here at Camino Ways. Yep. Well, at Camino Ways, uh, we essentially provide uh, services on the Camino de Santiago and a route called the Via Francigena. Uh, which is in Italy. Um, and how do you do that? You, well, you walk or cycle it, and that's what we provide the itineraries, either walking or cycling. Uh, most people will do it self-guided. Uh, so we uh, provide you with nice accommodation along the route, anything from three-star up to five-star where available. And we also provide you with luggage transfer, which people really love us for. So as we pick up your bags at your hotel, you spend the day walking to your next hotel, and we deposit your bags there, and they're waiting there for you. We also have a 24-hour assistance number. That's if you have any issues um, while you're on en route. And you can also do guided tours with us as well. Um, so we have an, a, a large number of guided tours on the most popular routes, which have uh, pre-departure dates. And they're all detailed along with all our itineraries and how to book and what to do and lots and lots of other information on our website, CaminoWays.com. Great. Um... So uh, just a brief on the Camino, what it is. Essentially, the Camino de Santiago is a pilgrimage to Santiago de Compostela to see um, the, the, the bones of St. James the Apostle. And so that's in northwest Spain, and all routes lead to Santiago de Compostela. And very quickly, before we get into the main part of webinar, just uh, the, the most, most popular way is the French way, which is the big ride in France. And that starts in St. Jean-Pierre de Port just across the border, immediately walking into Spain and spending about three to four to five weeks, depending on on, on how you walk, uh, all the way to Santiago de Compostela. The second most popular route would definitely be the Portuguese way, but from Porto up to uh, up to Bayona, along the coast and into Santiago de Compostela, that's very popular. And then we have the northern way from San Sebastian, cutting across the northern, northern coast. Uh, and we'll talk a bit about the food and wine within these regions later on, and then finishing in Santiago de Compostela. We have the Via de la Plata coming from Seville, but we only do the last 100 kilometers of that from a town called Lorenze up into Santiago de Compostela. And then we have the English way coming from Ferrol in the north uh, down into Santiago de Compostela. Definitely the shortest route, it's uh, just over 109 kilometers. Um, it's definitely the shortest route of the Camino, but a lot of people really like that route because you kind of get it done uh, with uh, get one whole route done in one week. Um, and yep, there's the general info about the routes. Great, Great. thank you. Uh, so we're at the meat of the uh, webinar today is the best Camino food and wine routes. Obviously, there are many different reasons people do the Camino, whether it's for religious reasons, for health reasons. And some people might want to choose to do it for uh, food and wine reasons, which would probably be my uh, go to option. So with that in mind, obviously, throughout Spain, Portugal, Italy, you're not going to really find a bad meal. Um, I have never found a really bad meal in those countries. The food is really great. But obviously, some regions are more well known for certain foods and drinks. So that's what we're going to take you through now. So the first one, I'm sure if you have looked up anything about the Camino related to food, you're going to know about San Sebastian and the Camino del Norte. Uh, San Sebastian is actually the foodie capital of Spain, and it is really well known around the world as just being a great place for food. There are 11 Michelin star restaurants in the city itself. I think there are three that are three stars, which is the highest accolade you can get for food. They've got their own kind of tapas, which are pinchos, usually with bread, with some like prawns, um, cheese, olives, ham, anything on top. It's really sort of simple food, but done really well, which is what makes, you know, it is what makes the food great. And you don't have to obviously go to a Michelin star restaurant like the pincho bars, regular restaurants. They're all it's just the quality of the food and of course, seafood as well. And for that, if you want to experience it, the best thing really is to get to San Sebastian maybe a day or so before you start your Camino and then walk from San Sebastian. And you can go as far as Bilbao if you have maybe just a week. 
But if you want to go all the way to Santiago, sample some Galician food as well, you can continue straight into Galicia and all the way to Santiago if, if you are physically capable, especially after having so much food. So it is really the Bay of Biscay as well is just is meant is just great for seafood as well. So that is definitely one of, if not the best place for food on the Camino de Santiago. I'm sure you will agree, Jeremy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, like having 11 Michelin star restaurants within one city alone, I think it's a it's the it's the largest amount of Michelin star restaurants in one area on the planet mm. and you know it, they're not as expensive as you think so it's definitely if you're if you want a real food experience and that's great advice there is actually maybe come a day earlier and spend an extra day um either either before you start your walk or after you start your walk to really get into an experience that and the pincher bars are amazing you can give them five euros and it's a ticket to eat as much as you can essentially as long as you're doing a bit of drinking as well which you do pay for on top mm -hmm. but i mean that photograph there of the pincho is literally you can you can eat eat away to your heart's content and you don't really need to go to a restaurant and the food is just fantastic um so it's yeah so it's, it's for me definite highlight uh san sebastian and 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 the northern way in itself because it's a great route mm -hmm. and jeremy do you want to tell us a little bit about la rioca yeah, so Rioja definitely it's actually my go-to wine. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, Rioja is um, uh, I suppose central northern Spain generally covers that region from Pamplona all the way across to to Lagrano. So actually we have it there. So it's essentially on the Camino Frances starts in Saint Jean, but the Rioja region will take you kind of from Lagrano to Burgos. Um, or Pamplona to Grano. There's one town you stop in which is famous for it. Has a it has a, a non-stop well, and you can just fill up your wine for free into your water bottle. Um, and I won't tell you where it is. You'll have to discover that yourself. But it's everybody stops there and fills up the bottle before they head off. But yes, I mean, if generally we do have some people sometimes ask us if, if we can do some wine tours. We don't because we organize people walking the Camino of Santiago. But again, you can take an extra day in a town like Lograño or Burgos or Pamplona and, and they have wine tours you can arrange from the hotel. Well worth it. Uh, Rioja wine is, is fast becoming one of the best selling wines on, on the planet. It's a very clean wine. It's a very crisp wine, and um, it's a very tasty wine. And um, it's yeah, it's 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 really superb. But also the local wines there. Um, obviously we don't get them in Europe, or if you if you're from America, if you join us from America, we we very rarely get the local wines, which um, uh, which are which are made for the locals. And I always, when I'm traveling through this part, I always ask the at the restaurants or at the hotels, what's, what's your local wine? And a lot of the times they'll be delighted because a lot of them are family run hotels. And, the, and they say, well, actually I've made my own wine because I have a, a small vineyard down the road. And would you like to try it? And yes, I would. And it's usually amazing. And, and the white as well, the white wine. Um, and the Rocco is is just fantastic. It's, it's it's very refreshing, very nice, and lovely to have after a long day's walk. Um, so yeah, that's generally the Rocco wine of, of Spain. It's it's very famous now and growing in popularity. Um, we see a lot of it in Ireland actually. So I'm very happy about that. Yeah, it's always in the supermarkets. My new life goal now is to have a vineyard just so I can have my own wine. Um, next is the Camino Portuguese and I adore Portugal and I love Portuguese food and I love, well, actually, to be honest, um, I wasn't sure if I would like port wine when I tried it and it is, it does take a bit of getting used to it, it wouldn't be my favorite, but I mean, you can't really be trying port wine in Porto and I think I went to see a show while I was there, so it was very good, but obviously, if you want to change from the Spanish and the French and the Italian stuff, you've got your port wine. The, I can't really pronounce this, but I did try it when I was there. The French said, I don't know, Francelina, it's the sandwich, the egg, very like thick, rich sauce. I'd say I didn't like it so much purely because it was the height of the summer and the weather this year has been ridiculous, but so much nice cod and seafood as well. And similar, you know, you start in Porto, you've got, the coast all along you've got your Portuguese food you can continue into Santiago to get some Galician as well and if you are desperate to try a pastel de nata which you can actually get in Porto but if you feel like you want to go all the way to Lisbon for this pastry uh, you can also start in Lisbon too but I think 
Portuguese food and Portuguese wine and stuff. It's sort of, I don't know, I wouldn't say it's as, it's kind of underrated compared to Spanish, but it is really, it's really, really good. And once you've had your first glass or two of port wine, the, you know, the strength of it doesn't bother you anymore. So it's, it's well worth it. Um, but that, that is the Camino Portuguese as well. We have Porto de Bayona, but again, you can go further if you feel physically, physically able. Um, but yeah, so that is Camino Portuguese. And we do have one more, and then we will be able to ask any of your questions if you have some about the routes. And that is Tuscany in Northern Italy. And Jeremy, would you like to tell us about this beautiful region? Well, do I need to really because it's Tuscany, you know, and that's you know, it, it, Tuscany is a lot of people go just for the food and um the fresh olives, the baked breads, the pasta, and the fantastic local wines they have there. This is where it's at. I mean, we talk about we've talked about the Northern Way and and San Sebastian and the Michelin star restaurants, very specialist. We've talked about uh Portugal and you're know, walking from Porto up to Bayona very seafoody very simple um uh, but the food is fantastic but then we come to Tuscany and, and this is where it really excels I mean literally everything comes out of the back garden um with all most of the restaurants you you will eat and if you do the Camino uh the pasta will be freshly owned homemade the olives will be out of the field the, and in fact you'll actually walk through some olive groves while you're walking the Via Francigena which is the route you walk when you're doing doing the Camino in Italy. And uh, and the meat is probably out of the farmyard as well. Definitely the local wine. Yeah, it's, it's just really stunning. I've had a, a lunch in Tuscany that started at lunchtime, but I think I, I got off from my seat at, at six o'clock, seven o'clock in the evening after eating about 25 courses. And you know, it's, not, it's not like full place. They're just kind of little little samples. But oh my God, what a day I had. Um, it, and it really is fantastic. Uh, one other thing I did do was a uh, olive tasting, which is definitely an experience. Um, good or not, I don't know. It was really interesting though. Um, it's a bit like tasting wine, except you're tasting the olive oil. And um, but it, it kind of gives you a great insight into the history. Um, you know, you get five thousand or sorry, five hundred year old olive trees, um, which still producing olives and and the oil from there, and it's 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 just fascinating history. Um and and of course the, the local people love and adore talking about their their own produce where it's come from um their history of that and and you know and and then they'll put the the plate in front of you and you'll just eat fresh food and, and that's really amazing fresh pasta fresh bread olive oil uh the wine yeah it's all there yeah I actually have lived in Italy before and it is it's all about the simple food done right which is the main thing with italian food and you really can't go wrong um that's it for what we have to say but if you have any questions feel free to unmute yourself or alternatively you can write in the chat box um i'll leave it open if we get no questions in maybe two minutes we might wrap up but if you have any questions about anything not necessarily just about food and wine if you've got anything about the camino if you missed last month's q a um or we didn't get around to your question uh please do ask now yeah, I've just made myself very hungry, so I'm going to have to cook down, go downstairs and cook some pasta, maybe have a glass of wine. <laughs> uh, does anybody have any questions about anything about the Camino, any of the routes, anything at all? You were saying the, the um, last part of the uh, route in uh, Italy, does that go to Rome, the last 100 kilometers, or which section of Italy is that? So sorry, I should have explained that a bit better. The Via Francigena, just on a, a very brief, um, it, it actually goes from Canterbury in the UK all the way across France, crossing the Alps uh, uh, into northern Italy and then finishing in Rome. So it's a massive route over 3000 kilometers. We actually only do the route from Tuscany to Rome. So that takes about three weeks. The In general, the Tuscany route, you can walk from um, uh, Lucca to Siena. So we fly in and out of, P of Pisa, very close airport. And and then um, you walk from uh, Luca five or six days to Siena. I mean, that's you know you're right in the center. You're right in the center of um, Italy, of Tuscany, and that's really good. If you want to continue on to Rome, then you continue to Vortibo, and then another five days will bring you into Rome city itself. And it is fascinating to walk into a Ro uh, into Rome. It's such a huge city, but such an historic city. 
and it also is an amazing city to spend some time in. Um, so for me, the highlight will be the week from uh, Luca to Siena. Uh, but then I my one I I don't like cities. Um, but um, um, but I would definitely spend some time in Rome. What what's the route from Assisi to Rome? Is that a is that a that's that's the that's the um St. Francis route, obviously St. Francis of Assisi so that does travel from Assisi to Rome. And obviously we don't have the map up here, but that kind of goes down through the central spine uh, in in the center of Italy. It's quite a challenging route, and actually it's 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 not we we've stopped doing it because it's uh, they keep changing the route, they keep changing the markers. There's not fantastic accommodation on the route, to be frank. Uh, it, and it is a route that you can still do self-supported. You'll find information on it if, if you if you if you go on Mr. Google enough. Um, and um, but as again, but it is a it's a route. It's a very good route. But I would suggest that you have experience in trail walking and finding routes while you're on that trail. Uh, Jeremy, um, Chris has asked, can you give a hint as to the location of the free wine well? <laughs> Well, it's a wine fountain uh, on the Camino, and it is within, let's say, it's between Saint Jean and Logroño. There you go. So it's probably within the first five or six days of where you walk the Camino. So if you want to find it, you have to start in Saint Jean, keep walking till you find it. <laughs> There's a hint. Cryptic as ever. Um, the map. Uh, Robin asked to see the map. Does anybody have any any other questions they want to ask as well? Uh, thank you, Jody, for your question. Also, by the way. Anyone else? If you uh, if you don't want to ask a question here, but you have some, you can drop a message on the Facebook where you saw the invite, or you can email me at uh, marketing at CaminoWays.com as well. Or you can just email in general info at CaminoWays.com. We do have a, um, what you call it, a contact form on the website. So, uh, and do subscribe to the newsletter as well if you're not already, because um, it's good, I promise. Uh, but yeah, we will we will be doing this again next month. And again, if you would do have any questions in the meantime, contact me on Facebook or the marketing at CaminoWays.com or at info at CaminoWays.com as well. Um, but thank you for joining us. And this is recorded as well. So it will be up on um, our website, YouTube and uh, Facebook as well. Oh, you're leaving tomorrow, Chris. Oh, great. Have a great time. And I really hope you find that, that wine well. Um, but have a great time. And yes, thank you, everyone. And we will see you next month at next month's webinar. Okay.